we're always bleeding and black eyes and everything else, but it's it's so good. Um, she's so fast. Her wrestling is so good. Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. Let's jump right into it. You know, you're going to be back in action April 8th. Your first pay-per-view since your debut in 2020. You know, you've yes. been, it's come a long way, right? Yes, it has. Um, I'm actually most excited about that. You know, I've been in Vegas every single um, fight, so it's going to be nice to not be, um, you know, like a little COVID fighter anymore and actually have an audience. So um, I, I'm really looking forward to that. What do you remember about walking out into that arena? Because it's completely different from the Apex. Yeah, um, it's it's going to be huge. There's going to be so many people there. Um, I mean, the the biggest thing for me is like whenever I first started fight, fighting, um, feeling that like tension and the just the atmosphere and the vibe from everybody. Um, so it's going to be really cool to feel that feeling again and just feel the energy from everybody. Was that hard to do like at the apex, you know, because there is no crowd? Yeah, it was really hard. Um, I mean, I feel like in the apex, you're a lot more focused because you can hear your coaches um, every single detail. Um, but that, you know, there's something different about like the momentum of the crowd, the booze, the um, cheering, whenever the momentum switches. Um, it's going to be a really cool feeling. So I'm, I'm most looking forward to that. Apex, they have a, a 25 foot cage, which is the smaller cage, and you'll be fighting yeah. in a in a 30 foot cage, the pay per view yeah. cage. Does that make a difference? Um, you know, I think it does. Um, you know, you have a lot more ground to work. Um, you have, you know, I think it actually appeals to um, wrestlers, mm -hmm. um, and, I mean, and strikers really too. But uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, it's going to feel different because I've actually never been in that size of a cage. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, and you're, you're, you're on the smaller end. So the cage is much bigger compared to like, <laughs> say a heavyweight, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm sure like John Jones feels like a, you know, like he's like trapped in a cage yeah. whenever he's at the apex versus, you know, a pay-per-view fight. Mm, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, your, your upcoming opponent, Jacqueline or Maureen, she's a LFA strawweight champion coming in, yep. uh, credentialed, right? And uh, what are your thoughts on her and, and the skill set? Yeah, you know, uh, I respect her. She's, uh, you know, I got to respect her ground game. I've watched every single one of her fights and um, even like some checkmat stuff. Um, it, very, very good on the ground. Um, super high level um, jiu-jitsu artist and she looks like she has really good pressure so i've been working a lot on my jiu-jitsu game i'm bringing a very good um uh jiu-jitsu artist as well um in my corner carol she's she's been helping me a lot so um you know it jiu-jitsu is great i mean i i'm working on my game uh but you know everything's different when you get punched in the face right it's 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 a lot different um so that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I'm, I'm really excited to showcase everything that I've been building on. When you, when you study an opponent, you, you mentioned right there that you, you watched all their fights. Is that something that you normally do? Is, is that, is that something that's new for you? Well, so early in my career, I would get like really, really nervous and like get anxiety watching other people fight um, and just getting ready for like, okay, this is my opponent. Um, but now um, I really looked at it as like, okay, I need to study everything, every nuance that she does, every little, uh, tendency, um, everything. So now I've just made it like homework. Um, and so it's really kind of like stuck and really helped me. Um, and as far as like my fighting style, it's actually improved. So, um, that's kind of mm -hmm. the biggest thing is I've, I've noticed is, um, it's kind of changed my game and thought about like my fighting IQ as well. Yeah. Just recently, John Jones, like during one of his pre-fight, I think embedded, he talked exactly about that. Like every yeah. fight is a test and he doesn't understand why fighters don't study for their tests. Like he was watching yep. film in the embedded while Cyril Ghosn was playing soccer with Video his games. friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. Huge contrast, right? And it's, it's how seriously you take it, right? It's, um, you want to know everything that they do. And I feel like even whenever, um, the pressure's on and, you know, you're, you're putting pressure on your opponent, they tend to go back to what they're used to, what they're comfortable with. And so 
if you can put the pressure on him and drag out those tendencies and those things that you've already studied, you're like, okay, I already know what she's going to do. Um, so it kind of puts you ahead of the game. Yeah. And, and how does it feel to see that in an opponent? Like you see what you studied or you see like, oh no, this is like happening the way that I envisioned it or I practiced it in training. Yep. It's, it's, it's pretty cool to see. Um, I, it's happened a couple other times in fights and I'm like, oh yeah, okay. That's exactly what we thought. Um, so it, it, it really does work. Um, I think it's like, you know, the ace in the hole, um, that you can just use and, uh, it doesn't take much, you know, it's just reviewing and reviewing and reviewing. It's not like, you know, rocket science. It's so, yeah. Yeah. It all depends also on the fighter. Some fighters are just fighters. They're berserkers. They go in there and they're just attack, attack, and it works for them. Yes. There's also that, that, you Mm -hmm. know, you get some anomalies where, um, they're just so wild. And so Mm -hmm. like, um, like, I feel like, I mean, TJ Dillashaw is kind of like that too, where he's just like so confusing all the time and he does so much different stuff that it, it's really hard to read him. Um, but again, everybody has their tendencies. So, yeah. and yeah. everybody's beatable. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. No one's untouchable. That's what's crazy about this game. And uh, yep. your last fight against Pierre Rodriguez, you know, how did you feel how, about how that fight went down? Yeah, I was a little frustrated with the decision. Um, I know she got um, a few takedowns, which gave her the fight, but um, I felt like my pressure was good. Um, And that's something that I really sat on these last five months is like, okay, you need to be so defiant and not let anybody take you down um, and be just um, almost offended if they do take you down. Um, So that's something that I've definitely been working on. Wrestling defense, wrestling offense um, is like something that I've just like been sitting on for the past like five and a half months. So I'm really excited to showcase that. All right. Before we get into the the training stuff, you know, 2022 was a, a very good year for you overall. You know, you went two and one in the octagon. How do you feel about the growth you had as a fighter? Man, I think uh, change in environment, change in scenery was everything for me. Um, whenever I moved from Washington to Texas, I feel like that, you know, set my game light years ahead of where it was. Um, and I'm just in a very positive and just happy environment where I can flourish really. Um, I've been working with Jenny Frey. Um, you know, Macy's like been such a mentor to me. Um, and so many other people at Fortis, it's, it's been great to just like rise to the level that they're at. Um, so I, I feel like that's really helped my game. Yeah. It's tremendous. Cause we've been speaking since then, you know what I mean? Like when you were in Washington and then when you made yep. the trip move to, to Fortis and, and now you're, you've been there for quite a bit of time. And, you know, after your last fight, did, did you need to step away? Did you need some time to kind of recharge or, or recuperate yourself? No, not really. Um, you know, I, I feel like even before I stepped in the octagon, I kind of beat myself. Um, you know, you start to like, think like, is this, is it too good, too good to be true? You know, cause I was on a two fight win streak and then, um, going into my third, I, I, I feel like I beat myself before I even stepped in the octagon. Um, so that was like something that I dealt with, um, little mental training, um, things like that, but that's water under the bridge now. And I'm, I'm raring to go. And this is going to be a completely different, uh, fighter that anyone's seen. I'm, I'm really excited. Yeah. Um, did you get, get to enjoy the holidays? So that was different too. Um, man, I, it's been years since I've actually got to enjoy Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, so that was actually, you know, nice to be around family and just enjoy the holidays and kind of get to, you know, let my hair down a little bit and relax and eat some food. And, um, cause I think this is like maybe four years since I've really, um, enjoyed the holidays. Um, so that was nice and that was refreshing. So, um, I've kind of got like my little, my fire back and everything else. Yeah. So I guess being able to enjoy the holidays did allow you to recharge and recuperate, Definitely. right? It does something to the Definitely. soul, right? To be able to it, be not worried about definitely. dieting and all that stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause we're constantly worried about that all the time. We're like, uh, should we eat this? Should we not? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but 
lots of pie, lots of uh, yeah. good good food, definitely. Yeah, yeah. the pie is it, the most important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you said you, you, you worked on your wrestling, you know, and, and what was the process of, of getting that better and, and more consistent? Um, yeah, I think it was just repetition. Um, you know, uh, Jenny Frey, she's such a good wrestler. Um, so there was so many days that we just worked repetition, repetition. Um, and then, um, my coach, uh, Bertolino and Charles Bird, uh, man, they, they've helped me so much. Um, but again, it's just repetition and time on the mat and man, I've spent so much time sweating and just drilling, drilling, drilling. It's been it's been good though, but now it's like muscle memory. Getting put on your butt too, right? That sucks. <laughs> and then working your way up, getting yeah. back up. So yeah, it's it's exhausting. But um, you know, I thought I had really good cardio mm. until like you start wrestling all the time, and you're like, whoa, okay, this is a completely different cardio. So now it's just like, man, I have like the the sprinter uh, cardio as well as like the muscular endurance cardio. So now it's like, oh man, I'm little little dangerous yeah yeah that's so important you know what i mean that that wrestling cardio i think is is one of the the most vital for for a fighter um yeah fortis is your home you you work outside of fortis anywhere else yeah i do um my jiu-jitsu gym progresso is up in plano um mm -hmm. texas so it's like 20 minutes away but um yeah very very good um jiu-jitsu guys up there so um i've got a lot of really good training partners um for everything you mentioned someone earlier in the interview that's that's going out there to to corner you yeah C carol she's she's new she hasn't she hasn't uh, been with me before um but we're training partners for the past like year and a half now um and she's she's very good um she's brown belt in jujitsu but um man i I mean, she ties up black belts all the time. So it's, it's, she's really good and she's helped my game, um, a lot. So, um, it, so I'm bringing her out and, um, just to drill and, um, work on stuff and for her to put me in bad positions and things like that. And I seen Emily Dakota, like she went down there for a little bit to train. Do you have other women that come by as well? Um, yeah, there's a, you know, a couple, a couple people that, uh, she moved from California. Her name's Tina. Um, she's come in. She's a very good wrestler. Um, she's uh, dating somebody, uh, one of the guys at the gym, um, Laird, uh, who fights in Bellator. Bellator. Um, he's a phenomenal wrestler, um, and they're all little little guys. So um, it's been fun to kind of work with them. Um, but between the wrestling and jiu jitsu, um, that's really what I've been sitting on. Yeah, that's perfect timing for you then. Yeah. Right when you wanted yeah. to start working with exactly. us. Exactly. That's exactly. good. That's good. And, and how was it sparring with Emily? Oh, man. Emily is a beast. Uh, so, like, even before uh, I turned pro, I worked with Emily up in Washington because she came up and um, we used to train together. Um, and then we took, man, it was probably, I think, like two and a half, maybe three years that we, like, didn't train with each other um, just because she was doing her own stuff and I was doing my own stuff. And, you know, it was hard to travel back and forth between Washington and Oklahoma. Um, but now that I'm back at Fortis, I, re we reached out to each other and I was like, Hey, Em, I'm back. Like, let's, let's start like training together full time. And she was like, perfect. Cause honestly, whenever I was in Washington, that was my favorite training partner. Like if somebody could be a fly on the wall, when Emily and I are doing rounds, it's like, we're throwing down. I mean, Jen and I throw down too. Um, but Emily and I, man, we're always bleeding and black eyes and everything else but it's it's so good um she's so fast her wrestling is so good um her jiu-jitsu is great um so she challenges me a lot and i'll i'll challenge her a little bit too so it's it's really good and it's you know she's top 15 so it's it's nice to kind of you know make that comparison and see where i kind of stack up and stuff definitely and you know and and also it's important to have training partners that you can trust right that's not gonna go too crazy and try to hurt you as well see that's another another big thing is Emily she's so controlled and um she knows exactly what she's doing so um it's been really really nice to train with her definitely because I never worry about like getting r really injured I mean yeah. you know bleeding is something mm -hmm. different but like you know leg problems or arm problems you know it's I, I never worry about it with them you know I think if you're training MMA or if you're training any kind of striking and you, even if you're not a fighter you have to 
get comfortable with getting hit in the face. That's just Definitely. it's just a normal thing. It's not like you're just gonna be flawless. You're not gonna be it's Floyd Mayweather right. out there, right? Yep. <laughs> you're gonna get hit. Exactly. Uh, I think to me, I myself like learning striking and MMA is just that's the thing that I'm still not comfortable with at all. Yeah. And that's like, you know, a lot of people struggle with that. Even really good wrestlers uh, that mm -hmm. come over and transition to MMA. It's like, not all of them have a chin. Not all of them get, get punched in the face. It's like, yeah, they have a really good wrestling background, but getting punched in the face is something different. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Sometimes I get punched <laughs> and I, it's like, okay, I got punched in this. Sometimes you don't see it coming and it's just, no. you get hit and then you go back to like your bad <laughs> tendencies, like go back to what you were saying earlier, right? You exactly. Go to just open yourself. You become vulnerable. Um, yep. Now, how do you feel you will perform at 287? What are your expectations out of yourself? Man, I, uh, I'm holding myself to a different standard um, than I ever have before. Um, I feel like my game, my cardio um, is light years ahead of it than it's ever been. I feel great. Um, I'm moving really well. Something else that I really focused on this camp was my strength and conditioning. Um, so I've been in the weight room. I've been lifting like crazy. Um, so I feel super strong. Uh, I'm looking for a finish in, in 287 and I want to put a stamp on it. It's like, I'm the first fight. Um, so I want to, you know, set the bar high and then hopefully get a bonus. So you're waiting to for the weigh-in so you go flex on everybody, huh? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, April eighth, man. UFC 287, Miami, a, a phenomenal place to fight, a phenomenal place to just be at. Um, yeah. Go in the descriptions, download the All Star app. Sam, thank you so much for the time and uh, all the best in Miami. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate the time.